a question that I don't know. That's why Finding Stuff Out is the name of the show. So just give me a shout and we'll figure it out with the help of some friends and the fun never ends. On. Finding Stuff Out, Finding Stuff Out, Finding Stuff Out, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Whoa, this lump of coal is hard. You're probably wondering why I'm trying to squish it anyway. Well, it's because of a question I got from Benjamin. When you squish a piece of coal, how does it turn into a diamond? Hmm, how does a piece of coal turn into a diamond when you squish it? I don't know. I don't even know if it's possible. But coal is carbon and diamonds are carbon. So, I'm gonna find out the answer because if I can turn this coal into a big sack of diamonds... Oh, yes! I'm rich! I'm rockin' rich! <laughs> diamonds are one of the most valuable rocks in the world. Kings used to put them in their crowns. And today, they're used in fancy jewelry. The most famous diamond in the world is called the Hope Diamond. It's supposed to have a curse. <laughs> Diamonds are hard to find, though, so if I want to have some, I'll have to make them. Hmm, I guess I have to do more research. Meanwhile, here's a question from Madison. What's the difference between rocks and minerals? I checked, and rocks are made out of minerals, but minerals aren't made of rocks! Wait, what? How can rocks be made of minerals, but minerals aren't made of rocks? Do scientists have rocks in their head? Brain getting warm, brain starting to go volcanic! <laughs> You're gonna make my head explode! It might sound confusing, but I checked and it works sort of like this. Minerals are like the parts of a sandwich. The bread is just bread, lettuce is just lettuce, the cheese is just cheese, and the tomatoes are just tomatoes. But if you put them all together... And you make a sandwich. And this one's got my name on it. Mmm, that's good too. Rocks are like the whole sandwich. Put some minerals together, and it's a rock. Also, no. don't talk with your mouth full, especially if you're doing a television show. Now, here's a question from Leo. How does a rock become a rock? How does a rock become a rock? Let's answer it with some hard rock. Rock cycle time to get down. When the pressure starts, the things get hot. You're gonna get molten rock. Smushed up minerals all combined to make the different rocks you find. Mountains are born, then they get born down. New rock, old rock, which is around in the rock cycle. Yeah, rock on, rock it out. Now here's a question from Munir. How many kinds of rocks exist in the world? I don't know, Munir, but I know someone who does, and he rocks. Please welcome Matt Herod. Oh, hey, cool rocks. Oh, thanks, Harrison. They rock. Rocks! <laughs> so how did you get started into collecting rocks? So I started when I was 10. I was given a little kit of different minerals as a Christmas present, and that got me really interested in learning all about rocks, reading all about them. Okay, so to answer Munir's question, how many rocks are there in the world? So there are three types of rocks on Earth. There's igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rocks. Igneous rocks form when we melt other rocks, like in a volcano or something. This rock has quartz, feldspar, and mica. Wow, so that could have come out of a volcano? That's right, when this rock cooled, those three minerals formed. This is a sedimentary rock, and you can see it's just like a big bunch of mud all like hardened a... together. Sedimentary rocks form when we break apart other rocks, right. and the sand or the mud that forms washes down a river, and eventually it settles down, and then eventually it hardens to form a sedimentary rock. The final type of rock is metamorphic rocks, and they're formed when we take an igneous rock or a sedimentary rock and we bury it really, really deep in the earth. I found out that it's super hot in the middle of the earth. 
So these kinds of rocks melt down there and get squished together, right? Exactly. All that heat and all that pressure causes it to change into a metamorphic rock. So that's three ways that rocks can get made. But how many kinds of rocks are there altogether? Well, when we change the way that they form, different conditions, we can get all sorts of different combinations and make thousands of different types of rocks. This is your collection of rocks here. Is this your full collection? No, I have so many more rocks back home. I haven't filled up my attic, but I certainly filled up the basement and the garage. <laughs> well, Tatiana had a question about some rocks that are out of this world. Are rocks different on other planets than Earth? That's a great question. Some rocks on other planets are a lot like the ones we find on Earth. Others are completely different. So today I brought with me a sample of a meteorite. You mean a rock that fell to Earth from outer space? Exactly. Why are you putting that glove on? Because the grease on our fingers can actually contaminate the outer surface of that meteorite right. or ruin it if scientists want to analyze it. So here's the meteorite I brought. And you can see on the outside, it's all burned and brown. Yeah. Like, you, like I just took it out of my oven. But that's actually from when it flies through the Earth, it starts to heat up and then it gets this outer brown color on it. That's called the crust. So this meteorite's been cut in half, and we can see that the inside is all speckled with different types of minerals inside. Munir, Matt says that the rocks astronauts brought back from the moon and the ones that were studied on Mars show us that rocks from space can be different from ours on Earth. But scientists think that the minerals they're made out of are the same everywhere in the universe. In fact, we believe that there might even be a planet that's made of diamonds. A planet made of diamonds? If you found that planet, you'd be so rich. Yeah, it's really, <laughs> really far away, though. That reminds me of a question from Malinka. Why are some rocks worth more than others? Yeah, so why are some rocks worth more than others? So the first reason is rarity. If it's really hard to find, and if there's not very much of it, right. then it's going to be worth more. The second is if it's really useful. If it's a mineral that can be used for something right. to help people, then it's going to be worth more. Oh, I heard iron ore helps make steel, which is used to build things like bridges and cars. Is that why it's worth more? Exactly. And the third reason is it costs more to get out of the earth, then it's going to be more valuable. That's why diamonds are so expensive, That's right? That's right. Diamonds are really hard to get out. They're really rare. And they're both pretty and desirable and useful. Cool. Can you stick around to help me find more stuff out? Yeah, my pleasure. Awesome. Now here's another question. This one's from Gianni. What do you use rocks for? So Gianni asked me what rocks and minerals, like metal, are used for. I thought of some answers, but I was hoping these guys could help me figure out some other things that are made out of rocks. Pyramids, railings, earrings, fences, houses, garbage cans. Golden medals, like for the Olympics. The kettle that you make tea or coffee in. Cars and some lamps. Watches and lampposts. Cement. Pots, pans, statues. Wedding rings. TVs. Almost everything are made out of rocks. Wow, you sure use a lot of rocks. So, Gianni, to answer your question, looks like we couldn't get by a single day without using rocks. Here's a question from Victoria. I like to have some gold. Where can I find some? The Flat Earth Corner! In medieval Europe, scientists called alchemists thought they could actually turn common metals like lead into expensive metals like gold. They thought all you had to do was add mysterious chemicals and... Ta-da! Huh? Nothing happened. Wait, that was a chemical for my invisibility potion. You can still see me. Good. Okay, so now you take a little sprinkle of this and turn the cheap piece of lead into priceless mess. For hundreds of years, people thought they could make gold out of cheap metals like lead, but it didn't work. Actually, Victoria, there's a lot of gold in the world, but it's usually mixed in with other stuff in very tiny amounts. In a gold mine, they mine tons of rock, 
and take all the little bits of gold out of it. Another way miners find gold is by panning for it in streams. And that's today's... My Great Challenge! All right, today my challengers are Zach... Yeah! ...and Brianna. Woo! You're gonna pan for gold like real miners. Also, Matt came in because he helped me build a stream. Streams are a great place to find gold. Gold, when it washes out of rocks, is so heavy, it washes down streams and it sinks to the bottom and gets caught in the sands and the gravels. So then all you have to do is come and scoop it out. And look what I brought with me. Whoa! Did you find that in a stream? Oh, I wish. I had to chip this out of a rock. Mm. This is a mineral called pyrite, or fool's gold, and it looks just like gold. And it's even fooled some miners in the past. All right, so we don't have pyrite for you, but we have actual real fake gold for you to find. Are you pumped to find real fake gold? Yeah! We're gonna get fake rich! <laughs> all right, take your positions. You'll have two minutes to pan all of this water and find as much gold as you can. The one who finds the most gold will be the winner. Are you ready? Yeah. Three. Two, one, go! That's right, guys. Swirl that water around and find the gold. Getting a lot of sand yeah. there, Brianna. Swirl, swirl. Any water? It's cold. It's cold. <laughs> you really need to get a lot of water so you yeah, can yeah, yeah. get rid of the sand, right? And find the gold. That's right. Brianna's got some. She's off to a great start. She'll be fake rich in no time. Zach has some too, but he's got some catching up to do. Remember, the more you swish, the more you can fake rich. That gold is super heavy. It's always at the bottom of the pan. Get more, get more, get more water. Keep going, keep panning. More water, that's the trick. Brianna's looking for that buried treasure. Look at that. Zach's got some more. He might be catching up. Hmm, Brianna likes to dig through the sand to find her gold. Zach has a different way of doing it. He likes to swirl the water around. It's all technique. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. Oh, I have this. That's not <laughs> oh. even gold. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, well. Good. So close. You dropped it. <laughs> all right, let's see who got the most gold. Zach, let's weigh yours. 11 grams. Whoa. How much would that be worth if it was real gold? That's like $500. My precious. <laughs> <laughs> and Brianna, let's weigh yours. 26 grams. Whoa. That's like $1,100 of real money. <laughs> You're the winner. Yes. Congratulations. But I guess you both win because you get to keep the real fake gold. <laughs> <laughs> so would you guys like to do this all day for your job? Pan for gold? No, thank yeah, you. Yeah, because then i just keep it. <laughs> <laughs> and then it'd be real gold, right? Yeah. Thanks yeah. for playing. Now here's a question from Joseph. How do rocks grow? Hmm. rock a -bye, baby Rocks. Come on, little baby rocks. Grow! I've been watering these rocks for days now, but still nothing. I bet you think this is silly, but there really are types of rocks that do grow. Can rocks grow? To find out, I'm going deep inside some caves. And to show me around, here's Riles Forest. Hey, Riles. Hi, Harrison. You excited to go caving today? Yeah, so where are you going to take me? Trevor and I are going to show you through Riverbend Cave, which is the deepest cave here at Horn Lake. Let's go caving. Sure, but what about non-rocky things like bats or, or bears or something? Don't worry, we won't find any, except for maybe some moths, cave crickets, or spiders. I wonder if there'll be diamonds. Can rocks grow in there? Yeah, we're going to see some pretty cool different things. I'll show you. I think caving's really cool that you can go in a place that not many people have been in before, and you can explore different places and have crazy adventures sometimes. You never know what's around the corner. This is a cool ladder. Woo! <laughs> ah. This is so cool.
Wow. Can you see rocks growing in here? All this white, pretty stuff you see hanging from the roof and on the walls, you can always see them growing. It's called calcite. So it's when the water flows through the cave and then picks up bits of calcium. And the rock has the calcium because it's made of dead sea animals, their shells and bones. So when the water picks up the calcium and then drips from the ceiling, it'll leave a little ring. And then over years, it'll build up and then get longer and longer. And that's like a stalactite, right? Yeah. Cool. And then if it still has some calcium left, it'll drip onto the ground and form a stalagmite. Stalagmite, stalactite. So how can you tell the difference between them? Stalactites stick tight to the roof. Stalagmites might reach the top one day. Or C for ceiling, G for ground. Cool. And then when they connect, they form a column. A column. So that would be from like the floor all the way up to the roof? Yep. It doesn't look like they're growing right now. But they are. They grow 2.5 centimeters every 100 years. Wow. That's not very fast. And that's, that's not very the fast. fastest one. Oh, that's the fastest one? Yeah. So we won't be able to see them grow with our eyes. No. <laughs> Still really cool. There's also lots of other calcite formations, like draperies, bacon strips. There's a cave crocodile. Oh. A cave wolf. It's amazing, all the different ones. Yeah. I got one other cool thing to show you. Come on. Cool. There we go. There's water! There's water! Waterfall water. Yeah, so this formation we're coming up to is called the Ice Cream Waterfall. It's actually three stories tall. Wow, this is so cool. Oh, and it looks like there's diamonds. Don't touch it. If you touch it, it'll kill it, because calcite is like crystals, kind of. Mm -hmm. So when the water flows through with the calcite, it'll catch on the crystals and keep building up bigger and bigger. But if you touch it, it'll break them down, and the oils from your skins will break them down, so if you touch it, it can't grow anymore. Oh, that's no good then. You kill it. Oh, no. The crystals look a lot like diamonds. Are you sure they're not diamonds? I'm sure. <laughs> Is there diamonds in caves, though? Some caves in other parts of the world, you can find diamonds, but not in these caves. Darn. So you wouldn't happen to know how to squish coal into diamonds, would you? No, sorry. Darn. Well, thanks, Riles, for being on my show and showing me all these cool caves. Thanks for being interested into caves. Oh, and I know one more thing that caves and rocks are really good for. Having fun! So it turns out that rocks really can grow. And that's the subject for today's... <laughs> the Experiment! I'm going to see if I can grow my own rocks the same way they grow in a cave. I have two jars of water here in which I am dissolving Epsom salts. Then, I'm taking this string with two weights attached to each end so that it'll sink to the bottom of each jar. Then I'm gonna slide this plate underneath. And wait. As you can see, a week later, I've grown some stalactites and the start of some stalagmites. Pretty cool. Going to the caves with Riles was pretty fantastic, but I still want to turn coal into diamonds. So, I'm trying to squish it using these elastic bands. And in a minute, I'll reveal it, and then answer the question that started me on this rocky road. When you squish a piece of coal, how does it turn into a diamond? Well, Benjamin, the big answer is... Ah, oh, it's just coal. Sorry, Benjamin. But if there's any way to turn this into a diamond, I bet I know who can tell me. Hey, Mac, I have a question. Yeah, sure, Harrison. I was trying to make diamonds out of this coal because I heard people can do it, but I couldn't do it. 
Well, it takes a lot more than rubber bands and hope to make diamonds out of coal, Harrison. Surprise! Matt says that most diamonds are not made from coal. They're actually made from other kinds of carbon material, deep underground under very high temperatures and pressures. But now, scientists have found a way to make them in special labs. The way they do it is they take carbon, like coal, and they heat it and they squeeze it at tons of pressure and heat, and they try to simulate the same conditions that we see in nature. And voila, man-made diamonds. Are synthetic diamonds like that worth as much as real diamonds? No, there's no replacement for nature. Well, thanks for helping me find stuff out, even though you couldn't help me make a fortune in diamonds. No problem, but let me give it a try. Sure. What? How did you do that? Magic hands. It's gone. Rock on, Harrison. Wow. Hey, Rocky, check out what happened at the cave. So just remember, if you're going down and you kick a rock down, just remember to yell, rock, so that everybody below you knows not to look up when the rock's falling down. Hey, you know what? This is really cool. This rocks. This rocks. What? Rocks? Sorry, I was just getting really excited about the rocks. Oh, okay. See you next time for more Finding Stuff Out. Rock cycle, time to get down. Rock cycle, down in the ground. When the pressure starts, the things get hot. You're gonna get molten rock. Smushed up minerals all combined to make the different rocks you find. Mountains are born, then they get born.